so this is a continuation of the last day's class in the last day's class we had done the various uh, transport mechanisms of the plasma membrane and this is almost a recapitulation of this uh, last day's class and a continuation of the same so we did last day diffusion among diffusion we did simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion in case of both simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion the ions or the molecules move down their gradient so moving down their gradient simple diffusion they move through the plasma membrane facilitated diffusion they have a receptor or a channel through which they move down their gradient now next we last day we also did the active transport the active transport can be of two types the primary active transport and the secondary active transport in case of active transport the molecule moves against its concentration gradient in case of primary active transport the molecule is moving against its concentration gradient with the breakdown of energy energy is required to move the molecule against its concentration gradient in case of uh, secondary active transport usually another molecule is moving down in it, down along its concentration gradient that is from a higher to a lower concentration as a result of which another molecule can be moved against its concentration gradient i'll be giving an example to explain this in a brief detail i just summarized what we did the last day now these are certain things which are certain slides which you can go over, over while looking into this so this is a concept of diffusion through the pores this is a diffusion of one type of molecule this is diffusion of two categories of molecules here in small small definitions the diffusion of uh, i mean the definition of diffusion osmosis then the def uh, definition of simple diffusion facilitated diffusion and active i bhavlo ami shunte pacchi na bhavlam amari kotha bhavlo ami shetai bhavlo lagche hota amari bhavlo kichu shunte pacchi na shona jacche na to ma'am ma'am recording kintu pause korenni shona jacche ha ha ma'am ebar clear ha ha jacche acha majkhane bodh ektu kete gechilo mane link ta ektu disturb hoye gechilo acha so uh, here we'll be having the definition of uh, you can read the definition of the um, uh, diffusion two categories and active transport i'd like to have a magnified view of this picture because beautiful examples through beautiful examples all concepts of transport has been shown here this is an example of simple diffusion where oxygen carbon dioxide can diffuse in and out depending on the concentration this is an aquaporin molecule this is a facilitated diffusion water is moving undisturbed through the plasma membrane into the interior via special channels present on the membrane which help in transport of water known as aquaporin these are channel proteins they help in outward uh, sorry inward diffusion of water from the exterior to the interior so this is a channel protein and this is a receptor channel a membrane receptor where glucose this is this also falls under facilitated diffusion this is also facilitated diffusion this is also facilitated diffusion in this category the glucose transport of glut1 via the glut1 glucose is being transported from the exterior to the interior of the cell so these both categories fall under facilitated diffusion now let's come to active transport here you can see three sodium ions are being pumped out and two potassium ions are brought in so three sodium ions are being pumped out is against the concentration gradient and breakdown of energy is very much essential so it is the breakdown of energy as a result of breakdown of energy you can see that uh, the uh, i mean to say um, uh, sodium can be pumped out and potassium is brought in so sodium potassium pump is an example of active transport here is another form of transport the anion protein exchange 
Here, similar types of ions are exchanged. One is moving in as a result of which the other is moving out. Okay, so we can bring this under the category of secondary secondary transport, secondary active transport. Now moving on to the next slide. Last day I had showed a glimpse of this slide to you all. So whenever molecules are moving across the plasma membrane, they are using receptors or channels. Okay. So we have for the movement of molecules, there are three basic paths that can be discussed because they are crossing the plasma membrane. Usually, if you remember the signaling topic, receptors used to bind with their ligand in the extracellular region. But when we are thinking of movement of molecules across the plasma membrane, three basic categories can be thought about. The first category is channels. Just now I said there was an aquaporin channel. So there are channels through which ions can move. In, through aquaporin, water can move. In fact, there's a sodium potassium channel through which uh, there are sodium channels. Sodium potassium is a powered pump. There are sodium channels, there are potassium channels, there are calcium channels. So these channels help in movement of ions and these channels can be gated or ungated. Gated means this side is blocked. So even if the molecule wants, the molecule cannot come out. So depending on the opening and the closing of the gate, the molecule can come out. Because calcium, for example, calcium is actually, the storehouse of calcium is endoplasmic reticulum. And we do not get a high amount of calcium always present in the cell cytoplasm. So when the calcium is needed only, the endoplasmic reticulum from the ER lumen, the calcium comes out into the cytoplasm. So there are calcium channels on the surface of the membrane of ER. Right. And those channels are gated channels. Normally they remain closed. Whenever there is a need for calcium, the channels open and the calcium comes out. So there are channels. The second category which helps in transport of molecules across a membrane are the transporters. Now transporters means the molecule will move either through the mechanism of facilitated diffusion or the molecule will move through the mechanism of active transport or passive transport. Keep it in mind that when we are using these category of uh, molecules, when you're using these category of molecules, they all fall under the category of facilitated diffusion or active transport, primary and secondary. Normal diffusion does not take place through any category of transporter, power pumps or channels. So now coming to transporters, so if a molecule, a single molecule moves through a transporter, then it's a uniport. If more than one molecule moves through a transporter, then it is a symport. Okay. Now we have two categories of symport. One category of symport is that it allows the movement of molecules in the same direction. So it is al allowing the movement of molecules in the same direction. So hence it is known as symport. Last day I was talking about the sodium glucose symporter where because of the movement of sodium down its electrochemical gradient, glucose can also be moved along with it against it, its electrochemical gradient. So there, is, there are symports, two molecules moving in the same direction. Just keep it in mind, look, there is a red arrow and there is a black arrow. Since the red one is moving along its electric gradient, the black arrow can be transported in the secondary active manner here also. Here also, this look at these two black arrows, okay? So the black arrows are moving against their concentration gradient while the red arrows are moving down their concentration gradient. So for the movement of the red arrows, the black arrows can move. So these are both, these are different forms of secondary transport. So the, this is uh, the symporter mechanism where both the arrows are moving in the same direction. The red one in favor of his concentration gradient, the black one against the concentration gradient, and this is moving in the opposite directions. The red one down his concentration gradient, the black one against his concentration gradient. 
no atps are being used so both these categories fall under the secondary active transport now coming to the atp powered pumps here you can see the red arrow is and the movement of red arrow is always against its concentration gradient since the molecule always moves against its concentration gradient you can well understand that it requires energy to travel and that energy is provided by the breakdown of atp to adp and pi this in or the release of inorganic phosphorus actually provide the breakdown and the release of inorganic phosphorus provides an energy which is then channelized to transport this process so active transport is mainly mediated by atp powered pump so these are examples these are this this is an example of ion channel i've showed you this picture gate closed gate open this is the example of a transporter pump whenever the word pump is associated keep it in mind that atp is involved here also there are gates to mod modulate the movement of the transport and this is this is an example simple example this is a very simple picture of uh, the Um, uh, different transports we saw i just wanted to show you this picture this is how the aquaporin looks you can see this is the small channel through which the water molecule the red balls of the water molecule the water molecule is uh, passing through and these are the basic alpha helix structure of proteins the alpha helix spans the membrane and forms a small channel in between through the channel the water molecule is passing in uh this is the example a perfect example of an active transport i talked about the sodium potassium pump so this is an atp powered pump you can see the atp is at, at attached to the cytoplasmic end and in this conformation the channel is closed the sodium potassium pump is a gated pump you can see there are two gates so it's the opening and the closing of a gate by a difference of a fraction of a second that actually modulates the movement of the sodium and potassium along with the energy released by the atp so there are there are two to three factors involved in operation of this category of pump however in your syllabus since it is a, a definition and an example of an atp power function of an active transport so this picture and the representation was very simple so i thought of giving this picture in the closed format both the ends are closed and you can see sodium has attached with the pump and breakdown of atp the sodium enters and the outer surface of the gate opens now as sodium moves out potassium is uh, becomes uh, the there's a conformational change in the pump you see the breakdown of atp has brought a conformational change in the structure of the pump as a result of which now on the extracellular surface potassium can bind there since potassium can now bind to the extracellular surface this change in conformation occurs because of this breakdown sodium moves out potassium remains bound enters the pump and comes out and as you can see the moment sodium comes out this gate remains again gets closed in the next cycle again atp will bind again three sodium will bind so you may see the moment the potassium comes in there is again a conformational change in the binding site of the gate and now it is ready to bind to three sodium ions and ready to bind to a atp molecule again so it's a cyclical process this continues this is a example dual example of both primary act, uh, active transport and secondary tra active transport here you can see we just now talked about the sodium potassium pump okay so in the last step what do we see sodium goes out now as sodium goes out sodium will now move down this electrochemical gradient so higher concentration of sodium lower concentration of sodium so sodium is now moving through this symporter this is a symporter and glucose is having a lower concentration glucose is having a higher concentration inside so sodium lower concentration inside higher concentration sorry very sorry sorry very sorry 
sodium higher concentration outside lower concentration inside glucose lower concentration outside higher concentration inside sodium will move along this electrochemical gradient glucose will move against this electrochemical gradient both the molecules are now moving together because of the downward movement of sodium along its electrochemical gradient this transport is favoring the transport of glucose against its electrochemical gradient so this is an example of secondary active transport and you can see this is a symporter molecule because both the molecules are now moving in the same direction now this is a chart where i have given you the examples because this differences may come so when you write in your exam yeah, you can write the differences in this manner give these headings and write the differences so the substances involved the energy requirements limit to transport here also the same heading applies so i have given you some differences about the variety of transports for to be written during the exam and now coming to one part which is not a part of your syllabus with me but i just wanted to give you a glimpse of this i think so this falls under the transport mechanism where molecules move from the nucleus to the er to the golgi and out to the cell in the plasma membrane and outside the cell and the molecules move from the outside via the plasma membrane into the cytoplasm so there are these kind of movements also occurring within the cell this kinds of movements comes under the gross heading of transport of macromolecules within the cell and outside the cell so so you can see the heading this is vesicular transport this as i am again repeating this is not a part of my syllabus but i think so vesicular transport you will be studying in the cell biology part so i'm just giving you a glimpse of that so what happens in vesicular transport this is a beautiful another beautiful picture of sympotent antipodes so i wanted to show you this picture and now i wanted to show you this picture this gives you an idea about the number of molecules this is a <coughs> picture is uh, right now in um, it's a bit less magnified you can magnify it in your own screens you can see see the number of molecules that are being transported within a cell on and off remember that the plasma membrane is is a nothing but a biological membrane so a biological membrane always comprises of a protein lipid protein bilayer uh, sorry protein lipid bilayer protein with carbohydrates moieties attached to either the protein molecules in form of glycoproteins or either the lipid molecules in form of lipoproteins so this is what we have studied apart from the plasma membrane being the main membrane that covers the cell there are a lot of other biological membranes that are covering different cellular organelles we do not name them as plasma membrane because it is not the cell covering but they have the similar structure and the similar functional expertise of that of a plasma membrane so look at these biological membranes a biological membrane covering other nucleus a biological membrane covering the chloroplast a biological membrane covering the lysosome then we have the peroxisome the glyoxisome the mitochondria okay so these organelles are also covered by a biological membrane so similar in nature to the plasma membrane so the laws of Uh, transport which we just discussed diffusion active transport passive um, uh, secondary active transport facilitated diffusion so these laws of transport holds true for these categories of biological membranes also okay so this is something to be thought um, um, understood and you can see so this there 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 is a pump mechanism occurring here you can see amino acids is coming in through carrier proteins you can see water entering through aquaporins you can see oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide entering the mitochondria through simple diffusion you can see that 
movement of molecules in and outside between the mitochondria and the cytoplasm. You can see hydrogen entering into lysosome. There is a pump out here. There's also a pump out here. Hydrogen entering the lysosome. So variety of transport mechanisms are here. Here they have magnified and shown here in chloroplast also. You see a ATP powered pump. The existence of ATP powered pump within the chloroplast. See breakdown of ATP into ADP. So there is also active transport occurring here. So these mechanisms, the mechanisms of transport uh, that is applicable for a uh, plasma membrane are also occurring within these organelles, organellar membranes. Now coming to, as I said, this was a, if you remember when I did the junction class with you, I had said uh, that the tight junctions have a role. I had said to you that the tight junctions maintain the fact that glucose does not leak out from one cell to the other cell at the apical region. They ensure that the glucose comes from the intestine, traverses the cell, and then moves out through the basolateral region only. And we have discussed that this is a secondary transport, secondary active transport, where via the symporter mechanism, sodium and glucose are entering. And then it's a uniporter. This is a symporter, this is a uniporter. Glucose coming out of the cell, and this is a sodium potassium powered pump. So you can see the, this is the picture of a epithelial. Um, it's a picture of a epithelial cell surrounding the gut lumen. This is the gut lumen. Okay. So this is an intestinal epithelium, and you can see on the two sides of the epithelium, one which faces the interior, and the other surface which face, faces the whole of the gut. You can see there is a glucose importer and a glucose uniport. And there is a sodium potassium driven pump that maintains the concentration of the sodium so that sodium remains at a higher concentration outside, at a moderate concentration inside, because sodium has to move down this electrochemical gradient to bring glucose against this electrochemical gradient. We had so there is a gradient stage maintained. So the concentration of sodium is higher here as compared to here, when this symporter is actually operating. So it's moving down the concentration gradient. So uh, this thing has to be kept into mind. This is a view. Uh, so as I was saying that if you look into this picture, there's a concentration of glucose. So you can see the glucose is uh, moving from a, a lower to a higher to a lower. So the cellular concentration of glucose is ma maintained at a high level. When you study bio biochemistry, you realize that glucose is the basic uh, substrate which is always used to get energy. So there is always a high cellular level of glucose that is usually found because glucose is kept trapped in the cell. Now, uh, uh, this is the uh, movement of, um, um, uh, I mean to say, a molecule. But uh, here I had, I wanted to show you the picture of uh, the gates. I mean, so when there's a gated channel, when there is a gates that open outside and then open outside and inside, there are different gates, then the channels exist in some conditions. Let us see that uh, this is a sodium and uh, uh, glucose, uh, as you can see, this is a mechanism of glucose transport that is fueled by sodium gradient. So this is basically the sodium glucose symporter actually working, but the other pictures were very simple pictures. Now you see how the gates open and close. So this is the picture of the gate or the uh, symporter when it is closed. You see it's written occluded empty. That means the gate, the uh, channel or the symport is now closed. No molecule is there at present. Now occluded outward open. Remember, if a uh, symporter is open both ways, what is the guarantee that a molecule will not in, uh, enter from the inward surface? So there is no guarantee for that. So to guarantee the fact that there is no 
a movement of um, a molecule from the cytoplasmic surface so when these kinds of gates open and close they move do it in a definite manner as you can see since there is a higher amount of sodium and the lower amount of glucose on the outer surface we need to transfer it together via the secondary active transport mechanism what happens the outer gate opens keeping the inner gate closed i would not say it as gate also the outer what part of the symporter opens keeping the inner part closed so it binds with the sodium and then it binds with the glucose and the outer part of the gate is closed so this is known as occluded occupying so you can see there are two phases of the um, um, symporter so this is where it is closed without any transport molecule this is where it is filled with both this transport molecule now to ensure that the sodium and the glucose will enter the cytoplasm you can see the inward part of the port has opened and both the molecules are released so this is how even though it seems so very simplified as you can see it seems seems so very simplified as they are entering and going out however the uh, it takes fraction of a second for this transformation of the gates but this is the step wise procedure through which the gates actually open close open close open close so this is from bruce albers and the picture itself is very self explanatory to understand that how this sympose and antipose actually work and coming on to the part where i said so with that i finish my syllabus so this is the last part uh, i said that i'll be dealing with i'd say i had said that i'd be giving you a glimpse so these are also uh, mechanisms by which cell membrane engulfs materials from the outside and allows them to enter the cytoplasm basically the mechanisms can be broken into three categories one the inward engulfment of larger molecules you can see the larger molecules are being engulfed to produce small vesicles with engulfed particles so this is exocytosis uh, sorry 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 very sorry very sorry sorry this is endocytosis so endocytosis this is under endocytosis this is phagocytosis where larger pot particles are being engulfed for example engulfment of a bacteria here you can see a very small particles are being engulfed so it's known as pinocytosis and here you can see there are certain receptors the receptors are now binding with their ligand molecules and as you can see the membrane is <clears throat> gradually pinching inward is it has become solidified a bit and is pinching inward to form membrane bound vesicles okay so this is also a form of endocytosis but this is known as receptor mediated endocytosis and finally you can see this is a vacuole in which certain molecules or molecular debris is there and the debris needs to be thrown out of the cell so the vacuole fuses with the plasma membrane the vacuole i'm sorry not vacuole the vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane and the molecules are thrown out so this is exocytosis and as i was seeing that you can see that we have a lot of membrane brown organelles and this is how in a three dimensional state how a cell looks so molecules move from the nucleus to the plasma membrane and molecules from the outside you can see are moving inside via the plasma membrane to the cytoplasm so there is molecular movement between nucleus and plasma membrane and from plasma membrane to nucleus let's look into this picture see there are two pathways the exocytic pathway that is molecules just now i showed some molecules are via vesicles are thrown out of the cell so it is moving outside so this pathway is moving outside and we just saw that via endocytosis largest molecules or smaller molecules 
or via receptor mediated endocytosis, smaller molecules are brought inside the cell. So you can see smaller molecules are brought inside the cell. And you can see here budding, small, small vesicles bud here, budding out here. Small vesicles are budding out from the Gol Golgi and fusing with the plasma membrane. So you can see this is how the budding out is occurring. This is a transport vesicle containing certain molecules to be taken to the outside of the cell. So this is the donor compartments. It can be an endoplasm. It, it is basically a Golgi and the buds are formed and the buds then fuse with the plasma membrane to throw the cellular proteins to the outside of the cell. Okay, so this is basically cellular transport. Uh, this is also the endocytic pathway. Uh, this is a stepwise process of endocytic pathway. These pictures are very self-explanatory, so I have given these pictures for help because I think so you'll be studying them in cell biology. So if you, if you study these pictures, you'll be having a basic concept of how the cellular movements are actually taking place. Go through the pictures. This is another beautiful picture. You see, there are two colors. There's a green color, there's a red color, and there is a blue color. Now, the red color is basically the exocytic pathway. That is, the molecules are moving from interior to the outside. The blue color is basically the retrieval pathway. What does the retrieval pathway mean? It happens that by mistake, a protein which is supposed to stay in a particular organelle. For example, you can see a small bud has fallen from this endoplasmic reticulum. And this bud, after fusing with Golgi, comes out and finally moves out. Moves out. Or finally moves out. By mistake, if a resident protein of the ER or a resident protein of the Golgi, by mistake, goes away with this vesicle, then it needs to be retrieved. It needs to be brought back. So it can move out. See, it moved out. But it needs to be brought back. So see? The vesicle moved out containing that protein and there are these early endosomes where they fuse and this early endosome realizes that this protein shouldn't go outside the cell. It is a basically an organic protein. It should go back to Golgi. So it returns the uh, protein, the organic protein back to its mother organelle. So the red color is the exocytic pathway, molecules moving out. Blue color pathway is the retrieval pathway, where if molecules are moved out, they are also brought in by this pathway. They are returned by this pathway to the various cellular organelles. And the green pathway is the endocytic pathway. There are certain foreign elements taken up. Then whenever there is a foreign element taken up, usually its fate is cellular lysis that is done within the lysosome. And later on, the lysosome also sends vacuoles containing cellular debris to be thrown out of the cell. So that is basically the picture of how cellular transport occurs. And now this is uh, another example of a carrier facilitated diffusion. Go through the pictures. These are some differences. These are some enzyme markers of different biological membranes for, for objectives they might come. So these are some enzyme markers of different biological membranes. These are some properties of ion channels. 